Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel and today I want to talk about my 90 days as a PCT in the operating room. I've kind of been putting it, it off for a bit because I wanted to give the job some time to really let me settle down in my thoughts and not come on here with like an angry mindset about the position. But yeah, anyways, if you guys wanna hear about my three month update as a PCT, then keep watching. To be honest, I really don't like this job. It's not for me. I don't know, when I was reading the job description, it was, you know, I don't know, maybe Maybe I was just putting my own twist onto the job as to what a PCD does in the hospital. But the things that I had in mind did not match the things that I thought we would be doing in the operating room. I don't know, but I just don't like the job. It's just not for me. I did write down like an outline of things I wanted to discuss to make sure that I get in everything that I want to say in this video and be as clear as possible. But of course you guys may have questions and I'm fine with answering questions. I really do like when you guys do interact with me in the comment section. So that's always a plus. I'm a PCT and other places may call them a, like a patient care orderly or an orderly assistant or an attendant A. I've seen all of those. I've heard all of those different job titles for what I'm currently doing. All right, so how do I like the job and would I recommend it to others? It's not for me, it's not an easy job. You know, it's very easy, but you guys do. We deal with a lot, it's a lot of drama. Well, first of all, it's no patient care interaction. Like you're not dealing with patients. The most you do with patient is help them transport them to their beds after being onto the OR bed. That's the most interaction you're gonna get with the patient. I feel like there's one type of personality in the operating room in that that is police is literally like high school and it's very clickish in in the operating room i know you have like um clicks on the floor but i've never seen clicks like in the operating room it's it's really bizarre you know the saying is too many chiefs and not enough indians that's what you have in the operating room everybody wants to be the leader everyone wants their hand in a pot but nobody wants to like listen to each other like they're all fighting each other to be on top yeah people do talk down on you i had this incident where when i first started um I think I was a good month in, I believe. And so, I, in my opinion, I don't think it takes a whole 90 days to understand how to clean rooms and take down specimens and transport instruments into soiled holding. So, I didn't stick with my trainer throughout my 90 days because I felt like it wasn't necessary. He filled out my training book during that during the first two weeks. Like it wasn't that hard. He showed me everything and you know, you get used to things within like the first three weeks, to be honest. And when I was on the floor, it didn't take me that long to train. So I was kind of surprised when, you know, the managers were telling me that it'll be a full 90 days for you to train when it wasn't like that for me on the floor but that's neither here nor there so i didn't stick with my trainer and so i was waiting for a room to come out and so instead of staying standing outside of the room i just went back into like like a back hallway and stood there and waited so one of the surgical tech coordinator one of the surgical techs coordinators she found me she saw me she was like why aren't you with so-and-so you need to be with him when he's in a room you need to be with him so where is he and i'm like what i told her i was like um he's i'm waiting for a room they're still on the bed and i'm just waiting right here for them to come out well you need to be with so-and-so so i'm like oh my gosh 
I was like, okay, like, all right. So I went back to the room and the room still didn't come out. So I'm just, and he wasn't there. So I'm still waiting for the room to come out. I'm standing outside of the room and waiting for the room to come out. And so once the room come out, I cleaned it, left, and I saw her again. And I'm just like, oh my God. She's like she's looking dead at me. And so she, she comes up to me she apologizes basically this is what i told her i said instead of like assuming what i was doing you should have asked what i was doing you don't come at somebody like that in an aggressive tone because you never know how i could have reacted like it could have been a negative situation but you know i'm not like that like you know i already knew the environment coming in so i didn't give any attitude back but I just let her know how I felt and what she should have done next time because it wasn't necessary to come at me like that. But yeah, um, there's many more stories like that. But she did tell me like when, you know, people aren't, she just basically assumed that me and my trainer had an issue, which we did, but I don't, elect, I don't let my issue with that person affect my job. I just distance myself, but either way, I work alone and he works alone and my co-worker work alone but she basically was like oh well when another person has a conflict then that person tends to not do their job and i told her like that's just not how i work i came here to work and i'm gonna work i don't let issues affect how i am as a person like i'm still gonna work i come here to work i'm not gonna come here and not do anything that just makes no sense so that's what i mean about it's too many chiefs and not enough indians like she was she inputted herself into something that wasn't that didn't involve her basically so but yeah like the people in the operating room they look down on the pcts the doctors expect you to speak first there is bullying going on in the operating room so I mind my business I don't I'm a quiet person and especially at work I just like to mind my business stay in my corner do what I need to do and go home so I have this table in the back hallway where I fold all my towels and these sliders when I have downtime I sit back there so um one of the coordinators she's not a manager she's an educational coordinator over nurses not over me we're just just get that clear she's not over me so i fold my table i fold the stuff back there and so her and another coordinator was looking for a a table to use in one of the ors There was like three tables. There was like a small one and then like an extra long one. And then you have mine was just like in the middle. And so you didn't see my table first. Like my table was the last one they saw. So they saw the small one. They're like, nah, that's too small. So they saw the extra long one and um, it was just a general table. But on it, someone wrote MRI, but they don't really use it for MRI like it could have said oncology's table and they would have used it and then there was my table and so one of the coordinator okay we're just gonna name we're gonna name them there was Sally and Becky so Sally saw the table and she's like hey we're gonna use this one and Becky was like no she was like nah because that, they use it for MRI and then Sally was like so who cares it's, just, it's a table like come on take it and let's go so later on in the day she saw me again and so she was with the, a nurse and a surgical tech becky saw me again she was with a nurse and a surgical tech and so she saw me folding towels back there and she was like Ugh, like what is she doing the nurse and the surgical, surgical tech laughed and walked away two weeks ago a, another incident it was another incident that happened before this one but the one i'm about to talk about was is the icing on the cake a room came out and i don't know what i was doing prior but no i was cleaning up a room and then i had my co-worker with me but she ended up clean, cleaning out the room that was coming out that I was going to. I don't know if this is gonna make sense but it's just stick with me. 
so the room is coming out and so all the managers is gone at this point so she calls me and she's like hey this room needs to be terminally clean and that means like we have to get in there and like clean the walls and clean the floors well we have to mop the walls and clean the floors and wipe down every single equipment in the every literally every every single thing in the room so i'm like oh okay that's fine so my so i go and find my coworker, or i tell my coworker, and she's like hey this room needs to be terminally clean and she just transferred from another floor she was like um don't they call environmental services and i'm like yeah usually they do and so there's a nurse in the room so my co-worker she asked the nurse that's in the room like hey does this room needs to be terminally clean she was like uh Mm, I really don't know and I'm like I don't know either because I just came here and I didn't see them take down like the plastic that was in the room or there's no sign out here no indication that this room needs to be term terminally clean and the nurse goes ahead and she calls environmental service to come up and clean the room because I don't think they were called to begin with. All right, so I'm like, okay, well, I'm about to go to lunch. Like, I'm hungry and it's been a long day. I'm going to lunch. So I go to lunch and then I come back, come to find out Becky is looking for me. <laughs> so I come out of the locker room into the OR and she was like, um, then I tell you to turn me clean room eight. And I'm like, um, I'm trying to think. I don't really know everyone's name. There's so many people in the operating room. So I don't really know everyone's name. So I'm like, um, she was like, room eight. I told you to clean room eight. And I was like, okay, hold on. Like, I'm trying to think of the nurse name that, um, that spoke to me. And so I was like, the nurse that's in room eight, she called environmental services. She was like, okay, but did I tell you to turn me clean room eight? And I'm like, yeah, but she just went ahead and called environmental services on her own. She was like, like, well, why would she do that? Why would she do that? Why would she call um, environmental services when I told you to clean the room? And I'm like, I don't know. You got to speak to her. And I just walked away. And then, you know, something else happened with the whole table situation, which was just complete nonsense. They ended up taking the table that me and my coworker was on. So I go and I go and talk to my coworker and we're just sitting in the back. And so my walkie talkie ended up dying and I'm like, dang, I gotta go back into the office to get the battery. So I left and I went and got the battery. So when I was going in the office to get the battery, Becky is looking at me like she wanna fight. Yeah, she's looking at me like, And I'm like, yes, like, what's, what's the issue? Like, what did I do now? Like, and she was like, so, so-and-so said you told her to call environmental service. And I'm like, and a nurse that was in room eight is standing in the office with me. And I'm like, no, why would I tell her to call environmental service? Like, that doesn't make sense. And she was like, well, that's what she said. And I'm looking at nurse and I'm like, well, I didn't tell her. And then so them two ended up going back and forth. So because she's come to find out she fessed up and said, oh, yeah, I called. So them two argument and then I just ended up leaving. So I go back and sit with my coworker and I think not even five minutes, she comes on the intercom and said, anyone who's not in the room needs to go and clean a room too. And I'm like, what was that for? Cause usually they come on the intercom and say, turn over room so-and-so, turn over room number two, three or four. And they'll come on, on the intercom and say that. But for her to go out of her way and act like that is just petty. So. I know that was a long story, but that's the that's just the type of environment that I'm currently dealing with. So I'll just give you guys a sense of the pettiness and drama you gotta deal with in in the operating room. But I thank y'all for the support. I thank God, y'all. I thank y'all for the support. I like y'all like y'all. I like the comments, even the bad ones, y'all. I appreciate y'all. I know I rich with no trick, but when all this stuff up, I hope somebody send me some money so I can be rich with a check. 
experience.